Even though we've known about the existence of most large animals for hundreds of years, we're still not quite sure how to classify them. Even though it may seem like an animal's classification is set in stone, it can actually change as we learn more about the animal. In some cases, subspecies can be reclassified as species, and in other cases, one species can be split into multiple species. Of course, this subject can get very complicated, and the debates can go on and on. In today's video, I will be focusing on some species that could be reclassified, and some species that are in the process of being reclassified. The first animal we will be focusing on is at home in the ocean, and it's one of the world's top predators. The orca is one of the most mysterious and iconic predators alive today, and it is the largest member of the oceanic dolphin family. It is the only extant species in its genus, but as we'll get into a little later, this can all change. Because orcas are such efficient predators, they can be found in many different marine environments around the world. They have an enormous range and they can be found in all the oceans around the world, and these animals are feared wherever they are found. They feed on a variety of fish, sharks, rays and marine mammals, but their diets and behaviours depend on where they're found. If you take a look at the orca's conservation status, you'll see that it's listed as data deficient. This is not because there's not enough information on this species, but instead it's because it's likely that the orca will be split into separate species. Some of these species are likely to be listed as threatened or endangered, whereas others may be listed as least concern. Even though there is only one species of orca, there are many different types of orca around the world. These types are known as ecotypes, and these ecotypes differ in size, appearance, prey preferences, foraging techniques, dialects, behaviours, and social groups. The ranges of some ecotypes often overlap, but they don't appear to interbreed, and they rarely even interact with each other. The exact number of ecotypes is still debated today, but there are quite a few across the northern and southern hemispheres. Some ecotypes will only feed on marine mammals, and others will only feed on fish. Orcas only tend to hunt what they are taught to, and this is one of the main reasons why there haven't been any orca attacks on humans in the wild. This behaviour can be quite a problem for some ecotypes, as they only feed on certain animals that are disappearing. Some orca ecotypes almost exclusively feed on salmon, and salmon numbers have been declining globally over the past century. This means that salmon-eating orcas are in trouble, whereas other marine mammal-eating orcas are fine. The orca is possibly the most famous example of an animal that needs to be reclassified, but thankfully it looks like it's going to happen over the next few years. For now, it's unknown if the orca will be split into separate species, or if it will be divided up into separate subspecies. At the moment, all we can do is wait, but as these animals can differ so much in shape, size, and behaviour, it's unknown how many different types of orca there will be. The next animal we will be taking a look at is one of the largest land animals alive today, and it can only be found on one continent. The giraffe is the tallest living terrestrial mammal, and it can be found across sub-Saharan Africa. Famously, giraffes have long necks so that they can get at leaves and fruits that other animals can't, but this adaptation comes with some drawbacks. It makes it very hard for them to drink at waterholes, but luckily giraffes don't have to drink very much at all. When they are drinking, they are very vulnerable, and this is where they're sometimes targeted by predators. Even though very few predators will try to take down a fully grown giraffe, this does not mean that their life is easy. In some populations, over 50% of all giraffe calves do not survive their first year, and this can be because of predation, poaching, and habitat loss. Giraffes are found in fragmented habitats across sub-Saharan Africa, and they are currently listed as vulnerable. Strangely, in the future, this conservation status is set to change, as there is no longer one species of giraffe. Traditionally, giraffes have been thought of as one species, and this species was split into nine subspecies. Today, this has completely changed, and there are now four different giraffe species. Some of these species have their own subspecies, and now there's a more efficient way of classifying these animals. 
Strangely, not everybody recognizes this new classification, and some still see the giraffe as one species. As I said at the start of the video, people love to debate this topic, and some people are very stubborn and won't welcome the new change. The giraffe was originally classified in 1758, and since then we've learned a lot more about these animals. It's only natural to change their classification as we learn more about them, and this can help with their conservation too. By splitting up the giraffe in this way, we are able to understand what each species needs and the threats that each species faces. As these animals are scattered across Africa, the threats faced by each species can be completely different. Splitting them up in this way allows us to deal with these threats separately, and it can allow all giraffe species to thrive. Hopefully in the future, things will get better for these mammals, as they are one of the world's most iconic animals. For our final animal, we will be heading over to Asia, as we will be taking a look at the giant panda. The giant panda is a bear that's endemic to China, but it's not the only panda in existence. The red panda can also be found in China, but it's not closely related to the giant panda. The giant panda and the red panda have quite a few things in common, but these similarities are thought to be a form of convergent evolution. The red panda and the giant panda both feed on bamboo, and they both possess false thumbs. These are used to grasp bamboo, and this adaptation has become very handy for both species. Even though the panda is classified as a bear today, for decades its taxonomic classification was debated. It shares characteristics with both bears and raccoons, yet molecular studies indicate that the giant panda is a true bear. Studies show that the giant panda diverged from a common ancestor of the bear family around 19 million years ago, and this is why some refer to it as a living fossil. Even though it is a member of the bear family, it has a few characteristics that are not very bear-like, and it is the most unique member of its family. Unlike other bears, they have vertical slits for pupils, and they are more docile than other bears. Even though the giant panda is a bit of a loner today, there were once a few other species. All of these species disappeared by the late Pleistocene, but they were also bamboo-loving bears. There are two subspecies of giant panda alive today, and one of these subspecies is a beautiful brown colour. Because these animals are so strange and because they are so unique, it's easy to understand why there has been some debate over their classification, but for now they remain a bear. If you think you know of any other animals that could have made it into this video, then let me know down in the comments below. But for now, thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and until next time, goodbye.